I am going to be joined momentarily here by Dr. Song, a holistic, let's call it integrative pediatrician, um, incredible person and doctor and author and just wealth of knowledge. And so I'm really excited to get to speak with, I see Dr. Song, you're there. I'm going to let you in here just a sec. Um, super excited to get to share her with you today because I actually have the privilege of getting to be, well, I don't have the privilege of being a patient. I would actually love that. Um, <laughs> my kids have the privilege of getting to be patients of Dr. Song's and um, I've just learned so so much. And so, uh, gosh, back in December, we had, like I'm sure so many of you, just lots and lots and lots of colds and flus and even stomach viruses. And we were trying to head out to Disneyland. And we've already had one time where we were super sick at Disneyland and like one kid missed the whole day. And so um, Dr. Song gave me a lot of really great advice as well as a lot of really great supplements and honestly helped save our trip. And so I was like, gosh, I would love to bring you on and have you just chat with um, everybody here about that. So, all right, here we go. Let her do it. Oh, there we Hello. Good morning. Hello. Oh, now my dog thinks that there's somebody. Oh, nice. No, no. <laughs> Dr. Song and I are both Bay Area yeah. uh, based, which is so great. And I honestly don't remember who first recommended you. I think it might have been my own functional MD back mm. like 10 years ago. Uh, and so we have the privilege of getting to see you, although not often enough because Bay Area people know. I mean, we're we're East Bay. Dr. Song is South different, Bay. And so it's quite a world. Different quite world. A commute. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Quite a commute. Um, but we reconnected back, and I don't mind saying this if that's okay with you, but we reconnected back when we were about to go yeah. to Disneyland. And Easton um, had strep throat twice yeah. in, in like a few weeks' time. It was crazy. And we did, the, we did the round of antibiotics. And so I reached out to Dr. Song and was just like, I don't know what to do. I don't want to blast his gut. Um, you know, I, I, we did the first round, but somehow he was re-exposed. And so how do we take care of him? How do we make sure that yeah. this goes away? A, um, B, that the rest of the family doesn't, you know, get sick. Um, and C, that we take care of his yeah. gut health you know, going yep. through this. Uh, and so a few of the things, um, well, first of all, number one, we also had colds, I think, going through mm -hmm. our family at that time. We were supposed to go to Disney. You guys had a lot. We had a lot, which I feel <laughs> like everybody is dealing yes. with. Right now. It's like so ping pong why, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, and I think, you know, so many of, of my readers are families, mm. they're mothers, mm. and they've got kids as well. And certainly over the last few years, you know, our kids are just having to kind of rebuild their yeah, immune system. That's for sure. Uh, and so one of the things that I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have you come on and talk. Um, that was so surprising to me. And I want to get into kind of yeah. supplements, but I also want to get into gut health because I know that you are so passionate and have done so much research on that. And let me back up really quick and just say Dr. Song is Stanford. NYU and one U other CSF right. right up up the hill. <laughs> UCSF trained um, and just has incredible, incredible accolades, uh, but also is a functional, holistic, integrative. What's the word that you use? Integrative, integrative pediatrician. Integrative yeah. pediatrician. Yeah. Um, 25 years of research, has written one book, but also has one coming. I already pinned um, the comment here, has a brand new book that's available for pre-order that I got a chance to get to see. And of course, that's <laughs> where I went to the PDF. As soon as my kids were sick, I'm like, what does Dr. Song say to do? Um, and so that really is what your book is. It's like, you can, it's kind of like having a, an integrative pediatrician on speed dial and having all of those tools, <laughs> yep. all those tools that you'll at your disposal. So you guys can go on pre-order that. We'll talk about the book soon. Um, but uh, so sorry, I'm like all over the place here, but um, one of the things that I just was so surprising was I was like, I'm, you know, pumping the kids with, um, vitamin C, of course, it's where we go. Uh, and you know, and I, and you kind of were like, well, the first thing I would actually do is vitamin K. Vitamin No. D, vitamin D. 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 Yep. See, this is why yep. I am not. Um, and you know, so I, so can we talk through just kind of the, first of all, like what you would do to support kids and i think it really actually goes into adults yes. as well but during this really kind of busy cold and flu season right now with kids back in school and things like what are your kind of foundation things that every parent yeah. should know <laughs> i mean i was, i mean the foundation is 100 percent vitamin d i mean that's um that's i think well i'll just let you guys know for my family that is the supplement that we are the most most consistent about because vitamin d it's it's actually not a vitamin it's technically a hormone which is really interesting um so any woman out there who's having issues with you know horm hormones perimenopause i mean you name it i mean vitamin d is really important to optimize um but even you know for us here in sunny california yeah. even in the middle of the summer 
it is amazing to me how many children are um, outright deficient in vitamin D levels when I check their blood levels or insufficient. And so vitamin D, um, I mean, I even wrote a blog post, like why all kids need vitamin D. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, part of it is we don't have a lot of great, quote, kid-friendly food sources. And I, I say that in quotes because, you know, your kids can learn to love all sorts of different foods, but mushrooms are really high in vitamin D. My kids are not huge mushroom fans just yet, right? <laughs> um, you know, eggs are, are good sources of vitamin D. Um, dairy, of course, is, however, um, dairy is so inflammatory, as you know, and, and your audience knows. Uh, and so many of my kids just can't tolerate vitamin D and vitamin, D, I'm sorry, can't tolerate milk um, mm -hmm. and dairy products. And in the wintertime, dairy products just really um, create a lot of, from a Chinese medicine standpoint, a lot of phlegm, a lot of stagnation. And a lot of people know that, right? They start having dairy or ice cream. They're like, yeah. like clearing the phlegm from their throat, or, you know. Um, but vitamin D produces an antimicrobial compound. It's called cathelicidin. But when you boost your levels of cathelicidin, you're going to have your first line of defense against almost any any um, infectious organism, whether it's um, a virus or bacteria or even mm -hmm. yeast. And so um, that's just one of the main reasons in the winter time to optimize vitamin D levels. Um, and then gut health. I mean, yeah. right? You, I mean, your audience knows all about gut health, but um, there are in the literature, and this is where it's not just throwing like hundreds of billions of probiotics at your kids or even at yourself. It's knowing which strains are really helpful. And there are two specific probiotic strains that have been shown in the research in children, which is also really important, um, in children to reduce the um, rates of colds and flus and flu-like illnesses over the winter, miss days of school mist, which is I mean, for some kids, it's like they're missing every yeah. other week of school, yeah. right? Um, so yeah, so supporting gut health is also, I mean, those are probably the two things. If you can really focus on prioritize, that would be yeah. it. And can you tell us what those strains are? Because I did see a comment just now and it's like, what probiotics do you recommend for kids? Oh, yes. Yeah. So, you know, so that's a great question. And it depends, right? Yeah. If you're dealing with acne or if you're dealing with anxiety, which who doesn't have, you know, anxiety nowadays and our kids are suffering big time from anxiety. There are different strains that are really, really helpful. And so I'm going to throw out um, a couple of different uh, brands because uh, they, they have them in there. So Metagenics has a Meta Kids probiotic. Yeah. Um, that's a chewable grape one. They also have in capsule form, it's the very same strains that adults can take. It's called Ultra Flora Balance. Um, our Healthy Kids, Happy Kids probiotic, the immune probiotic is specifically for, has these two strains in it. And then there's an, a, a British um, researcher, Nigel, Dr. Nigel Plummer, who's, I mean, he's like one of the grandfathers of probiotic research. And so um, his probiotic is called Fit for School. I think it's called it and it has a couple of immune probiotics as well okay um so yeah so that would be for the immune system yeah uh, yeah so because for for the gut brain connection and you know focus attention anxiety worries I mean, that's yeah. a whole other story but there are a couple of probiotics that have um some really good strains for that and the one I'm thinking of right now that I recommended just recently life extension has one called I think it's called mood assist or mood improve. It's called mood improve. It has two strains that have been shown to actually improve dopamine and serotonin levels. Right. Wow. And it has, it has, um, an amazing herb that, you know, you cook with saffron, right. But saffron is a very uplifting, you know, mood supporting herb and also has been shown to improve ADHD symptoms wow. without the side effects and even better than Ritalin. Hmm. Right. So, so lots of different things that we can do. Yeah. Okay. So I have, I have a couple questions coming from that. First of all, can we back up and can you explain what an integrative pediatrician is? Okay. So for yeah, people who that's... might not know. <clears throat> so um, I moved away from saying um, holistic pediatrician okay. because, and the reason is because every single pediatrician should be yeah. holistic, right? Sure. I mean, we should take a look at this child in front of us who is our patient in the context of their family life, their community life, their schools, their friends, you know, all, all of that. And so, um, you know, that is really important. So we're all holistic. And another misnomer, I guess, or misperception is when you are holistic, you don't do anything conventional, right? right? And when you integrate, so 
there are so many different quote natural you know modalities out there so i don't do them all but the ones that i integrate with my conventional pediatric training and i train at ucsf i mean it's a it's it's a tertiary a quaternary care system where we see the sickest of the sick and you know the most complicated patients um and but you know with that foundation recognizing that a lot of the interventions that we have in conventional pediatrics, while they can save lives, they have a lot of unintended consequences, especially when we think about kids um, who may be on these meds for, I mean, if they start when they're kids, right. wh where's the end, right? So we need to support that with the nutrients that are being depleted, the microbiome that's being disrupted. I mean, all of that. So I integrate functional medicine. Mm -hmm. I do acupuncture on kids. Mm -hmm. I use essential oils, homeopathic medicines, herbal medicines. So I kind of integrate. And through the years, I mean, now over the past 25 years, I've been able to figure out protocols that are really effective and which ones, because when, as a parent starting out, you're like, well, which one do I choose? Uh, right. Uh, very and, overwhelming. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I've been able to um, sort of distill protocols that seem to be the most effective for most yeah. kids, whether they're like, you know, pink eye mm -hmm. or cold or cough or whatever it is. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which is very yeah. helpful. Um, okay. So the second question, and I'm seeing a lot of this, I think as parents, you know, we want what well, we all obviously all want to do the best mm -hmm. for our kids. And it is so overwhelming when you hear these things. So even just as you were talking about vitamin D and as you were talking about probiotics, you know, everybody's leaving comments of like, how much for a 14 year old? And how yes. Much yeah. Yeah. So as you know, first of all, what I love about what you do and the work you do is that you don't just keep your knowledge to the patients that come in and, you know, get to see you in office. You really try as much as you can to spread the wealth yeah. of knowledge and all of your advice through your books, through your course, which we're also going to talk about, um, and give parents the tools that they need. But the dosing things are, those are hard yes. questions because you want to make sure you're actually, what you're doing, you know, is effective for your kids. I think so often on the backs of all those bottles, it's such a small amount. And especially as yep. a patient, you know, I hear like, oh, I'm supposed to actually dose that mm -hmm. much. I would have never done that based on just what it says. And even for myself. Um, and so what kind of, what kind of advice can you give on that without knowing each and every child? And like you said, I mean, they should be treated yeah. holistically and that you're looking at their past, their family, their, you know, all of those things. So how do yeah. you give an answer to that? You know? So it's, it's, it's such a great question because that is the trickiest part. And, you know, even when you look at on some supplements, it will say, you know, not for use in kids under four and you have a three-year-old mm -hmm. with a cold and you're like, can I use that safely? And so, um, well, I mean, that's, that's actually partly why I wrote the book. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm like, I got, yeah, I got to get this out there. So I do have recommended yeah. uh, or suggested yep. dosages, right? The other thing too, is we know that there are some very, very common nutrient deficiencies across the board for kids and also for adults, mm -hmm. but zinc, vitamin D, iron, magnesium, omega threes. And so even if you don't have a doctor ordering those lab tests for you to really know um or you know, maybe maybe you, you're a little squeamish or you know hesitant about getting a blood draw for your child um there are signs of what uh some of those deficiency symptoms might be and how to guide mm -hmm. that um so so there are some general guidelines there um in there is a rule called clark's rule um that is it's um it's a supplement dosage rule and uh, basically, I'm gonna. Have, I'm looking this up right because I want to yeah. tell you the right thing. But you, you basically take um, your your adult. I mean, the standard adult dose, right? Uh, adult weight, which is 150 pounds, right? So you kind of take 150, and then you divide that by your child's weight. So, I'm sorry, other way around. <laughs> okay, so you take your child's weight divided by 150. So let's say your child is about 50 pounds, right? And so 50 divided by 150, that's one third. So then you can guesstimate, approximate that your child would need about maybe a third of the adult dose. So mm -hmm. that's a very general approximation. Now, sometimes kids, it's shocking how much more they need. Like if they're deficient in vitamin D to get their levels up, you might be like, well, they're taking more than me right now for a month just to get their levels up. Um, but that's where I would rely on blood testing if you okay. can. Um, but Clark, Clark's rule is a good rule of thumb to kind of get in. And, um, you know, there are, I mean, I, you know, I see a lot of like nursing moms, <laughs> pregnant moms, and, you know, that's where um, homeopathic medicines are actually some of my first go-tos for, for pregnant and nursing moms and little kids. Um, but then I also... Um, when I talk about herbs and things, there there are things that I'll 
say are really totally fine for little kids, even if the bottle doesn't say it, okay. um, or to kind of wait on that, right? One of the herbs that I had you get, the, the umka, um, yeah. that is fine for little kids. Okay. Um, and, and I took it when yeah. I was pregnant too, when I had colds. Yeah. yeah. So do you have a resource? I know there's a lot in the book and that's coming out in May, correct? May 14th. 14. 14. Yep. 14. Yeah. Okay. So you can pre-order it now and I put it on there, but, um, and I think you list some different kind of like your, just your go-tos in there as yes. well. Do you yes. have that anywhere? Is that also offered in your it course? Is is offered in my course. Yeah. Okay. So that's all there because I have some go-tos that, you know, for instance, for me, I mean, wintertime holiday travel, President's Week is coming. I'm not everyone gets ski week, but a lot of yeah. people do and go away. So I mean, whenever I travel, like one of our suitcases is almost all supplements. Like, I mean, just yeah. in case, yeah. right? Because you figure yeah. if you're sick in the middle of like, wow. uh, you know, the mountains in Colorado and there's not a single place to get right. some of these herbs or vitamins, you're kind of stuck. So I just bring everything because my I just feel like if I have it, I probably mm -hmm. won't need it, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I do have a list of go-tos and that's that's what the course was all about, yeah. right? Um, the the CRUD Cure course, the masterclass, because that's, I mean, the CRUD, but what's the CRUD? That's what we're dealing with yeah. right now, right? It doesn't matter what you call it, whether it's influenza or RSV or, I mean, even COVID mm -hmm. now we know, okay, like what are the things that we can do? Cold, I mean, there are, there are 200 plus different cold yeah. viruses. So that's why you can feel like, oh my gosh, just like one after the other after the other. Right. So rather than getting hung up on what is it, let's look at, okay, what are some of the underlying mechanisms? We know that your body has very similar defenses against different viruses. How do we help support that? Mm -hmm. And symptomatically, how do we help your kids from their snotty runny nose or their cough or their sinus congestion or their sore throat? How do we relieve that faster? Yeah. Yeah. And then for us as a family with three kids, which I know we talked about how you keep it from spreading through your house. That's kind of the other thing. I tend to be really good about my own supplements because I have an autoimmune disease. So I just yes. have it. Giving all the things to my kids sometimes can feel like I'm like, you know, <laughs> the, the drug dealer almost. But it's just hard <laughs> for me to remember because with three kids and like dosing out all the things, you know, it's not a uh, thing that I do every single yes. day. And I end, of course, to once I see one kid sick, I'm like, oh my gosh, we gotta get this. <laughs> and I would like to get to a better place of supporting and preventing rather than just trying to go on the defense, you know, when yes. somebody sick. But yeah. are there a few things that you would suggest for when that does happen? When you know somebody in class or somebody that you just had a play date with or one of your kids, yeah. you know, is sick and you're like, oh, I can't, I can't have, you know, that domino effect of like yes. being yeah. park for yeah. three weeks because one goes down after another. Yeah. Uh, so um, hands down, the number one thing, I mean, apart from like washing your hands, but you don't want to sure. wash your hands to, to the point of, I mean, dry and cracked, but um, there's a nasal spray and you can do a plain old saline, but the nasal spray that I love, it's called X Clear, X L E A R, mm -hmm. and it has a little xylitol, a little grapefruit seed extract. Xylitol is amazing. So it's a natural sugar that can act as a prebiotic. Mm. You find it in some um, toothpaste. It actually helps to support a healthy oral microbiome. So it does act as a prebiotic even for your idea. mouth. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so it is a, a good prebiotic. It also um, supports um, the part, one of the parts of your immune system that is our first line of defense against viruses. Mm. And xylitol in chewing gums and you know toothpaste have been found to reduce the rates of ear infections so wow. tons of different effects and so when we fly okay yeah. and I, I just flew back from austin last night right so the first thing i do when i get off the plane and get home of course i wash my hands and then i do the x clear i'm trying to flush out those germs before they take hold because after like let's say you know one kiddo comes home and you're like oh they have that glassy eye their nose is starting mm -hmm. to run right <laughs> and then what happens it's usually two days later or three days later that yeah. the next one falls and so yeah. it it but they're exposed that whole time and so yeah. it takes two days or so for that virus to multiply in your nasal passages or your throat enough for you to have symptoms but in that meantime, they're still doing their thing. So if you can kind of flush them out, kill them, you know, the viruses um, support your immune system, then you can nip it in the bud before it even ever has a chance wow. to take hold. So your child might actually be getting, quote, infected a little bit, but you're yeah. flushing them out. So they're, they're not symptomatic. Yeah, so that was new news to me when we were heading to Disneyland, and you told us that. And we, I took a picture that I forgot to send you, but we now have a bottle for each of my family members, and it has yep. the initials on it because, you know, I'm like, 
if they're sick, I don't want I know, to I know, yeah. just clean it off. But it has, you know, they all have their own initials on it. And I, my kids actually did it, which I was really surprised. I was like, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get my six-year-old to, you know, spray something yeah. up her nose. But I think because of the xylitol, it does have like just that hint of sweetness as it, it does, does. Kind of run down your throat. But yeah, you mentioned that, that it reduces the viral load. And I was like, gosh, when we travel, that makes so much sense. Or I feel mm -hmm. like all moms can relate to this, that your child comes home with a lip, that runny kind of glassy eyed, and then they like sneeze in your mouth. Yeah. And you're like, just, oh. you're like, oh my God. Like, please. Um, it's happened to me so many times. Oh, or, you know, they're just right there. Um, and so I feel like that's such a great just defense mechanism for when it we really feel it coming. And we did. We used it going down to Disneyland and it will become part of our routine too. You know, I just had them all in like a resealable bag and we took them with us when we traveled to Denver. And I, I it's something that we do from, from now on. Yeah. Well, and you know, really you could do it every day after school. You mm -hmm. can't really i mean in some cultures like in the ayurvedic culture doing the neti pot yeah. and and scraping the tongue that's a daily part of wow. hygiene right yeah. i mean so we don't do that here but yeah. why not it makes sense i mean yeah. this is all open to the outside world so why not clear right. everything out you know right no i loved it so somebody says is it literally spelled x clear i was thinking we could try well so if you join dr song's course and then also with the book she has a lot of those resources but we might be able to share a few after this just yeah. at least the names because i know yeah. we're talking about things quickly um so let's move into kind of what you're the most passionate about because somebody just said what is the best strain of a probiotic for mm. Uh, what did they say for immune health? I think, or maybe it was gut. Yeah, immune supporting probiotic strains. Not necessarily the brand, but like what strain would they be looking for? But also, let's talk about gut health and how it relates to immune health. And then you touched on it slightly, but the the gut and the brain connection, yeah. how yeah. strong that is, and why yeah. that matters. So this, so when we think about strains and, and the probiotic industry, yeah, has exploded. <laughs> right. I mean, you can't go to the store and find, you know, I mean, and see just shelves and shelves lined with probi probiotics, and you're like, well, which, which one's part? okay, right? Yeah. And so this is where, um, you know, through through my research and work with kids, I've moved away from saying necessary. Oh, you should have a probiotic every single hmm. day. It depends, right? It depends on what you're trying to um, accomplish. It depends on um, your diet, your lifestyle, you know, your gut yeah. health. And so, um, you know, it, and there are specific strains. I mean, there are trillions of bacteria in our gut, right? And so we're, we're just on the tip of the iceberg of identifying each strain specific probiotic that has a different benefit, hmm. right? Because probiotics... And in fact, the reason why probiotics might be so beneficial and fermented foods might be so beneficial, not because of the live bacteria in them, but because of the compounds that when these probiotics are eating the fiber or prebiotics in your diet, they are being fermented into what are called postbiotics. Postbiotics are things like vitamin B12 and um amino acids, um, our neurotransmitters like serotonin, mm -hmm. um, some detoxifying compounds, anti-cancer compounds. So these postbiotics are what are really beneficial. Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid that is so important for gut immune brain yeah. health. And that's probably the most important postbiotic there. So when you're having sauerkraut or when you're having um, kimchi or, or you know whatever it is, there may not actually be a lot of probiotics in there, but it's chock full of postbiotics. Now, when we're looking at um, specific strains, and this is where to um, spout it out is yeah. going to be hard because they're scientific names, right? But the immune, the two strains that I mentioned that reduce colds and flus and fevers and all that, one of them is called Lactobacillus acidophilus. So we all know that Lactobacillus <laughs> acidophilus, that's a species, right? But the strain is NCFM, NCFM, right? Yeah. And then the, the other one is Bifidobacterium lactis bi-07 right so okay, yeah so this is why you recommend the brands as opposed to telling people yes yeah. because, because you're like really okay what yeah that. yeah now the, yeah. the gut brain connection this is that yeah. this is one of my passions because you know we're, we're in a in a crisis of mental health exactly. you know for our kids and for our teenagers um i mean one of the statistics out of the pandemic and even way before the pandemic mm -hmm. kids were in crisis from a mental health perspective um but some of the more recent reports have shown that you know at least one in three teenage girls has been diagnosed with an anxiety mm -hmm. disorder. And then what's even more heartbreaking is, you know, 
about around one in four, one in five has actually seriously thought of a suicide plan, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And um, and one in ten have tried. And when you're talking about the LGBTQ community or you know ethnic communities, it's even higher. And so um, we have to understand as a community and as physicians and as parents and grandparents and educators the intimate connection between the gut and the brain. So the gut is called our second brain. Um, but it probably should be called our first brain. Mm -hmm. So most people have heard of the vagus nerve that connects the brain and the gut, but what a lot of people don't recognize is that about 80 to 90% of that communication occurs from the gut to the brain, not vice versa. Most of the communication is from the gut to the brain. Our brain cannot live without our gut, Mm -hmm. but our gut can live without our brain. Right. And especially in our toddler years, the way our our children's gut microbiome develops and forms has been um, really correlated with things like IQ and behavior and temperament. I mean, all of these different things are like, oh, I thought that was just that was um, nature. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. That's what we're born with. But it's it's not just that Um, I'm going to throw out a scary research article, scary in the sense that it, for a lot of moms who, you know, maybe they had antibiotics when they're pregnant or their kids had antibiotics when they were babies or have continued to have antibiotics, it can be a scary sounding research paper, but it's just to inform us. Yeah. So there was a huge study out of Denmark looking at um, pregnant women and their babies and kind of, kind of following them out. And just one round of antibiotics, whether during pregnancy or in toddlerhood, could increase the risk of that child having any mental health wow. concern in their later years as an older child, a teenager, some of them by up to 50%. Wow. And the more the rounds of antibiotics, the higher the risk. And so then I step back and say, all right, well, my kids, right, even as an integrated pediatrician, yeah. my daughter got antibiotics when she was three weeks old for Mm -hmm. UTI, right? Mm -hmm. My son got antibiotics when he was five weeks old because he had strep and like this pus coming out of his ear. So I'm not going to say don't give antibiotics when you need them, right? But then we need to know, all right, how do we support their gut microbiome? Because it's the disruption of the gut microbiome and the neurotransmitters that are not being produced when your gut is disrupted Mm -hmm. that has these downstream effects. Mm -hmm. So, and you can start at any age. Now, if your kid's already, you know, a teenager, it's a little, a little more challenging. I'm not going to lie. It's a little more challenging than if they were a toddler, but we can do it. And that's why we need to get this information out, especially when teenagers will have an aha moment, because a lot of them have learned about serotonin in some of their, you know, biology classes. Well, 80 to 90% of all of our serotonin is made by our probiotics in our gut. And so if our gut microbiome is disrupted. Well, guess what? Yeah. Doesn't matter, you know, how much Lexapro or Prozac you might be taking. Maybe it's mm-hmm. helping a little bit, but it could help so much mm-hmm. more if we actually help your body make more serotonin yeah. on its own. So that's what I love. So that's about, about your approach to all of those things. You know, I think it's so I and I think that's why we first came to you. My children were all born via C section, which I knew also started them out not on the best foot for just the, mm-hmm. the bacteria that was in their guts. And then Easton had a lot of ear infections and so had antibiotics from a younger age. I forget when the first time was. And so coming to you as the mom, you know, that we often blame ourselves or we're like, oh gosh, I know. And we put so much pressure on ourselves. And, you know, it was so nice to work with you and kind of hear like, this is in the past and here's what we do to go forward. Right. And so it's not, you know, it's not about like, don't ever do this. And you have to, there's a time and a place for all of those things that can be life-saving, but how do we then support and kind of, you know, rebuild after we have those things. So I'm sure yeah. every mom on here is probably like, ah, you know, but it's more about where do we go? And that's right. Past, yeah. And you have to do the things that you have to do. And that's um, part of uncovering that is just understanding your child's story. Right. Like how did they get here? Right? right. So then we, cause then we know, all right, that's what happened. And these are the steps we need to move forward and, and balance all right. of that out. So it's right. really, it's part of just uncovering that story. And sometimes that story starts with, you know, with you yeah. uh, from your childhood. If, you know, I had a lot of antibiotics when I was a kid, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that, mm-hmm. my mom was an OB. It was like, oh, you have a little mm-hmm. sniffle. Here's an antibiotic. Oh, you have a <laughs> I mean, I'm like, looking back, oh my gosh. Yeah, right? That's the way we were. I feel like that's the way we were raised. And even I think, you know, more standard pediatricians are, are a little bit more hesitant these days. Yes. They're not just putting out all for sure. Time. Yeah. Um, and I actually loved that too. Um, what, well, so a couple things I'm like reading comments and trying to bounce. Back I know, right. uh, so somebody said, what if you had to take antibiotics during a yeah. pregnancy for something like strep B um, or not? Is it strep it's B? It's group B. 
Yeah, Lucy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, so. And so I think that's, you know, that's, and then somebody else says, you know, my four year olds had four rounds of antibiotics. And I think what you would say always is it's never too late, right? There's never, never too late. You can't start to rebuild. And so I think yeah. that's really helpful for people to know. Um, but would you give any advice from there knowing, you know, that you're pregnant and you just took it or, or whatnot? Like, where would you kind of start? Yeah. So I'm going to, you know, kind of take a step back from a lot of the, a lot of people when they're kind of heading down the functional medicine road. And I will say as a, as when I was a really, you know, young, excited, function, new functional medicine practitioner, I did this too. And I focused on the mm. supplements, right? And yes, when you're trying to heal your baby's or child's gut microbiome or your gut microbiome, you need omega-3 essential fatty acids from things like fatty mm-hmm. fish, right? Or, or mm-hmm. um, salmon roe, ikura, right? Um, you need zinc, you need glutamine as an amino acid from your proteins, right? You need all of that to heal your gut lining and you need to restore, um, you know, the probiotic balance in there, yeah. right? And so that helps, but it never is lasting unless yeah. you really focus on your food and your lifestyle. And it sounds so simplistic, yeah. but I mean, isn't that what life should be about, right? I right. mean, if, we, if right. we can, the simple things though are often the hardest things. Yeah. Right. I mean, changing diet can be one of the most challenging things. Right. And a lot of people will say, I just rather take a pill. Well, yeah. yes, I can. I can get you better with a pill. I can get your kids better with a whole supplement regimen, but we're not going to stay there. Yeah. Right. We're going to keep sliding back. And the whole name of the game with your microbiome is building that mm-hmm. resilience so that when you get the next antibiotic round, your microbiome wants to bounce right back to where it was before. Right. right. Or right. you go to your kid goes to a party and you're cringing because they're having the blue frosted cupcake and you're like, <laughs> no. Right. And yes, they can bounce back. Right. Yeah. So that is, and that's why, I mean, your work is so essential because you're teaching how to actually eat real food that isn't hard to make <laughs> right yeah. that wow. is that is so <laughs> nourishing for your gut and for your immune system yeah. right and if you see i mean the foundations in my book i'll show you i got this i can't wait to send oh, you the hard cover. i have it i have I've it. only this, seen it on the computer uh, no. oh that's well, always this, so exciting this is the see. the paperback digital um, yeah but it's your whole, I can't wait to send you. It. I'm like, it's amazing to hold it. Yeah. It? <laughs> but that's where, you know, teaching how we do, how we eat, live, breathe, think, you know, all of the sleep, all of those mm-hmm. things, the things we do every day, how do we do that mindfully in a way that specifically supports your child's gut microbiome? Because especially for children, their gut health is everything. Right. And yet we can move the needle with small, simple shifts. And, and yeah. that's, that's what I'm all about. I mean, and that's I'm, what the book is. I know mm-hmm. we've focused a lot on supplements and I'm sure you see this all the time. It's probably like 95% of the questions yes, here. Yeah. And yeah. I think that is so important and why your book is so valuable as it really is, you know, and it's kind of what I talk about even with my, my autoimmune disease and the way that I eat, but it's yes. so much more than yeah. just the food too. It's my stress levels. It's my sleep. It's, you know, it's, there's so many things. It's even exercise for me. It's the amount of water I drink. And so there's, it's a toolbox. And there's so many different tools that have to go to making your, you know, to making you yeah. whole and healthy. And I love that from the perspective, especially for kids, because, and I love all the information and the advice you have in there about kids, because it's oftentimes really hard, you know? And so I think, like you said, like taking a bunch of different pills and spraying things in their mouth seems easier than trying to get them to eat <laughs> salmon five times a week, and, you know, trying to yeah. get them on to bed on time and, and all those things. But it really is so important. And I think it's so important to hear that it's not sustainable to just always take those things. Things, and you really do have to give your body a good, healthy foundation. You yeah. know, right now, I and you know this, I'm on a on a medication that I think has been incredibly life saving and has given me back my life. But it did not work for, like I said, it was supposed to for the first few months because I wasn't eating the way that yeah. I knew I was supposed to. And I, you know, I, the way I looked at it is, I'm like, I'm eating all these things that are inflammatory, but I'm taking an anti-inflammatory type of a medication, and so I'm yes. kind of like battling. Mm-hmm you know, the two things. And I'm, I might be raising one level a bit, but then the other one's kind of just coming in and like taking it over. And yeah. so we can give them all of those foundations to receive even the few supplements that they take, or, you know, if they have to take a medication to make it more effective, um, all those things are so important. And yeah. I love that the book focuses on all those different facets. It's not just take, take this and take this. And, you know, and if you did this, like you're out of luck, but it gives you all of the tools. And I think that's what you say, even in, in the, you know, the couple of summary paragraphs is it's giving the kids yes. tools to help keep them 100%. Healthy, giving mm-hmm. the parents the tools to know, you know, what to do and where to go and how all of those things, and especially the gut yeah. are, are so involved in their health. Yeah. Well,
And it's interesting. So I love that you said giving the kids the tools, right? Because, you know, it's one thing, I mean, you know, when your kids are toddlers before they start preschool, you have total control over what, you know, (laughs) what's on the table and what they ask for, because that's all they know. Right. right? Um, And then you, you know, you throw in some older siblings and you throw in school and birthday parties. And then it's like, you feel like you're battling everything. No, don't have that. You know, that artificial red dye 40 thing. And so we don't want to approach every situation, a social situation with fear and, um, and you can't have that. Right. right? It's really, it's all about explaining to your kids. And, you know, my kids know, I mean, even from when they were little, we talked about poops and all the the good guys in your belly and, you know, very simple terms, but even as kids get older, um, if you, I mean, every kid has their own thing that they're really, you know, wanting to, um, that they wish maybe were a little little different. Like for teenagers, it's almost always their skin, right? Or their hair, right? Um, But for a lot of kids, it's being faster, you know, when they're running down the soccer field, Mm -hmm. or it might be like being able to fall asleep easier, or, you know, not getting in trouble from the teacher so much because they can't sit still in their seat, Mm -hmm. right? Whatever it is, you want to figure out what their, what their why is, Mm -hmm. right? And like, Almost, I can guarantee you almost all of those concerns, questions, you know, wishes that your kids have, you can tie back to their gut microbiome. Did you know, right? That, did you notice that, um, you know, when you had that bag of, I'm going to call out Takis because I always do it because it's just like the thing my 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 son's friends want all that has right now, yeah, right? <laughs> that's all the artificial things that that are really disruptive to your gut microbiome but did you notice when you had that like at night you came home and it was just so hard to be in a good mood and and you were so tired and grumpy the next morning so you're you're making those associations yeah. right for them um or you know just how much harder it was to just be focused when you were playing soccer and so you make that association so that next time if they have a big soccer t- tournament coming up and they have that memory, oh, maybe I'll put something in my body that isn't going to affect that. Right. Um, and so when you teach your kids how to really, you know, read food labels, understand, you know, what what is what minimally processed truly means and what ingredients to avoid, they're going to make healthier choices as teenagers, as college students, as parents yep. of their own. So it this is a trickle effect and, and right. it really, and it's not about, like I said, never, ever. If you That's say not. like, never this, never that, it's not, you know, it doesn't Let's work. Let's go the other direction. Yeah. yeah. That's kind yeah. of the stance that we've taken. You know, I mean, I changed my diet when Asher was two and he's 13 now and I'm starting to see it. I kind of thought he would like rebel the other way and just yeah. go eat all the things at his friend's houses. But we did, we built that like correlation of, hey, you ate this and then how did you feel, you know? And and they're never, I mean, they still make bad decisions. And that's, I think, part of it totally. too is allowing them to fail, allowing them to feel, you know, so that they can really kind of look at yeah. it and process it. That's been the best thing yeah. for us too. But, you know, and then two to that same effect, my, my eight-year-old, which I always said from an early age, he would be the one that would be like in the corner eating the Oreos, or the <laughs> cupcakes, the things yeah, that he knows yeah. he's not supposed to eat. And he has definitely had his a few fair shares of that. He went to a friend's house and she was like, oh, he said he could have it. And I was like, yeah, so you know, <laughs> don't always listen to him. Um, and he, you know, ate a brownie at a little bake stand the other day and we talked about it. And I was like, hey, bud, like, you know, my mom makes brownies yeah. all the time. Like, you, you know, next time maybe just come home and just say, hey, mom, can we make some of your grain-free, dairy-free brownies? Uh, but I also knew that because of the foundation of the way he eats 95% yeah. of the time that I wasn't worried yes. about it. I might have been. My oldest, yeah. I might have been like, oh my gosh. Uh, but I've loosened up on that way a bit. And also just to let them start to make their own decisions. And he didn't feel great at yes. you know, the end of the day. And we don't ever want to wish that on no. our kids, but also no. it's a great learning it's a, experience. <laughs> great. I mean, that that is where, you know, when when you just help them yeah. notice. And, and that then you get more in tune, they get more in tune with their body, their tummy, their brain, I mean, whatever it is. So, um, so that because once kids notice that, right. they can start to make better um, decisions for themselves. And sometimes they're not going to, and you can say, look, that happens to me too. I mean, I told my kids, right. I mean, I came home, I was tired, you know, uh, and when you're tired, that's when everyone makes, you know, the worst food decisions. Right. Right. So I was tired, got back to my hotel room and I mean, siete, if you're gonna, you know, make, make a mistake, that's fine. (laughs) But the, there was a bag of, you know, delicious grain-free, you know, Mexican wedding oh, cookies, cookies, right? So good. So good. <laughs> but, you know, pro- you know, I probably could have 
stopped yeah. at three, but no, I had the whole bag because I'm sitting there like I'm yeah. tired. I'm just like trying to get some work done you know, before the next day. And I was like, look, I, I indulge. And now I'm going to surround mm. it by making sure I have a really, you know, solid, you know, breakfast the next morning and lots of fruits and vegetables the next day. So trying to create little bubbles around, like if you know your kids are going to a birthday party or if they're going to lunch with friends and you know, they're going to get the boba tea or the whatever it is and just say, look, why don't we, we know this is happening, going to happen, yeah. have what you would like, tr you know, be mindful of your decisions and, and let's try to cushion that with a, a really great bubble mm. of nourishing food. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great perspective. Uh, somebody is saying, which I, you have a lot of expertise in this field. So I want to say this one out loud. How do you do this with children with special needs and intellectual disabilities? Totally different ball game, which I know you see a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Are often. So, I mean, that, that is, and, and also, you know, on the <clears> one <throat> hand, it can be easier, um, in that sense to just, you know, manage some of their foods because they're not going out and buying their mm -hmm. own foods necessarily, you know, with their friends or going out to eat. Um, but this is, but I still would talk to, talk to them. I mean, I have a lot of kids on the spectrum mm -hmm. or with sensory issues or, um, you know, neurodivergent kids who, um, yeah, those, those artificial dyes are really, you know, immediately parents can notice the difference with their friend, with their kids. Um, kids sometimes can't notice themselves in the moment. Right. Yeah. If you think about, you know, when your brain is so inflamed, you're not, your brain isn't in the, in the state to recognize and have introspection. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But it can be afterwards. If you just mm -hmm. say, look, you know, let, let's talk about what just happened. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, you know, talking with, this is where um, if your kids are maybe in a special day class or in a classroom where um, uh, unfortunately a lot of classrooms and, um, and teachers will still use food as motivation. Yeah, we Right. So, <laughs> yeah. So really, you know, having that conversation, you know, with, with the teacher and letting them know, look, I will bring mm -hmm. in snacks that are appropriate for the entire class. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so, I mean, your child That's doesn't feel do. singled out or, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's yeah. such a nice, I, and I feel like every teacher we've had, and again, I've got an eighth grader, so we've been doing this for a long time, but when you approach it from a place of, you know, not wanting to diminish the teacher or, or if you come at it from a place of love and this is, you know, my child, but I think a lot of the times, a lot of them don't know. And so my, yes. you know, a lot of teachers yes. had have been really happy to take the information in and knowing, you know, that some of the things they were passing out actually were probably making their job harder <laughs> because they've got a classroom of oh, 20 kids. Oh my know, gosh. I mean, now bouncing off the walls. Yeah. Um, and we've done that too, you know, offered to bring in snacks. Uh, and I will say too, and I don't know what you've seen from your experience in your practice, but just in my 12 to 14, however long this has been years <laughs> of hearing, you know, stories from people, it's really hard. Um, but specifically from families in those communities with special needs and yeah. intellectual disabilities with other kids in their family. Yeah. I've heard from them that as hard as it is to make their family make the whole shift to the different foods, it's the only way that they can get it done. Because if a child, if one of their kids is sitting having mac and cheese and pizza, but then the other is not allowed to have those things, it's very difficult to get yeah. the child on board and to not make them feel like they're isolated and yeah. ostracized. And so um, bringing in the family to really try to support, you know, their sibling if they have one, um, while it's difficult is kind of what I've heard from people is the best I way. Think, I think it's change. essential. I yeah. really do. Um, because, I mean, and whether it's, I mean, it may be a child who has special needs, but sometimes it's a child with mm. eczema, right? Yeah. Or someone with asthma or, oh my God, um, you yeah. know. <laughs> You know, any, any um, persistent health concern that, that really could benefit from a shift in how the family is eating. Yeah. And when we make that shift as a family, if you notice, and if you have your other kids notice, or you have your, your partner notice, right, um, there's almost always a benefit that the whole family receives, yeah. right? Because you're eating cleaner, yeah. you're eating whole foods, you're eating more vegetables, you're eating, you're just eating in a way that, that is nourishing your brain, your gut, your immune system more. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. And you know, what I also tell families when they're, when they're going on um, sh shifting, you mm -hmm. know, their diet or their lifestyle, yeah. right? Let's say they're moving towards gluten-free or they're moving towards, you know, dairy free or egg free or whatever it is, right? Maybe it's a combination that you never want to, um, you know, go cold turkey. So you really want to, I mean, um, work in 
additions before you eliminate. Yeah. So you have these new foods become a regular part of your family's diet and your lifestyle. And then you can pick a, pick a date in the future where you're, you're not about to go on vacation. There's not a huge yeah. wedding that you have to go to or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and then you say, okay, from this is a date where we're just, you know, all of this is going to become yeah. now our, our family's new way of life. That's a really, actually really good advice rather than, especially for kids, rather than just like stripping everything mm -hmm. away that they're familiar with and that they're comfortable with and then just replacing it to start bringing in those things yeah. kind of in that. That's really great advice. Um, well, I don't want to keep you too long because I know you've got a lot to do, I am sure. Um, most people are asking if this is going to be recorded and posted. I need to figure that out, but yes, definitely. <laughs> um, I, everything is changed so much on the way oh, Instagram allows you to do I know, yeah. so with these lives. I'm like, I'll figure it out, but we will host it somewhere somehow for you to be able to rewatch, especially if you came in late. And I, I pinned the pre-order for Healthy Kids, Happy Kids, and it really is just this kind of 360 view on how to keep your kids healthy from everything, you know, from internally out, as opposed to the bandages that we so often just place over the things that are happening and the symptoms. Um, and so I'm really excited for people to get to have that yeah. in their arsenal. It's just such a great resource to be able to reach for because while we would all love to be able to have our kids see you, you know, in reality, you're, well, you're in the Bay Area. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, tap that guys. I think I've, I know you guys hear me say this all the time, but pre-ordering is so, so, so helpful for the author, but also for the message that's in that book. So pre-ordering, you know, first of all, you don't get charged until it ships. Um, and so it's a way to commit to the author, but also to show bookstores that this yeah. book is worth carrying, which yeah. is so huge, especially in our community, because for a lot sure. of times bigger, you know, bigger kind of retailers don't really see our messages as important necessarily, unless they see that there's a need and a want for it. And so pre-ordering gets to show them like, oh, there's actually people that want this. And so then they might carry it and put it on an actual bookshelf that people walking by could just find, you know, out of happens, like just, just because, and <laughs> it could change their life. And so I always say that I'm like, if you can, you can take the time and you want to get the book, just pre-order it now because then it shows up on your doorstep. You also help, you know, the whole, you just help propel the whole message forward. So I'm excited about your book. Thank and if you. you can't wait until May, we'll also post a link in my stories to join in Dr. Song's course, which you can find, you know, and I, I don't, I, I don't know as much about it. You can tell us quickly, but you can kind of get to navigate your way through there, which is really nice. Yeah. So you can do it at your own pace. You can kind of find the things that you need, you know, right now, but then go back and watch some of the videos and kind of read through some of the resources yeah. that are in there too. And the, the course, so especially right now, as we're, I mean, I'm still seeing flus yeah. and colds and we're still kind of in the middle of it. It looks like it's going to be a little bit of a later season this year. Um, but the, the masterclass is all there. The course for um, what to do with sniffles or cough or sore throat or earaches or, you know, tummy aches, vomiting, all of that. Um, and um, when you join the next couple of months, so I've had this kind of winter pop-up Facebook group where I come yeah. in and I do these lives like, you know, every other Thursday so that when parents have specific questions, I can answer them. That's so great. yeah, I would love to see you so guys. There's so many questions yeah. in here. We didn't yeah. get answers. So that's actually really good to know that you do them every other Thursday and yep. help answer some questions. Um, really quick before we go, because one question I saw over and over again was how to avoid or get rid of the stomach flu, like mm. the the dreaded, you know, the, the, the dreaded. That. is that in, is that in your course? It is. I, it is. Is there yeah. really truly anything that you can do once you get it? It's it was. So yes. I mean, there okay. are some great homeopathic medicines. Okay. So I write a list of them. I mean, it's just, yeah. Cause I mean, everyone, any mother who's had uh, a kid who's been vomiting, uh, that's just the, that's worst. the worst. I mean, I can't, it Especially really, when you have other kids yeah. in the house and you, those, they're so it's good. So um, awful. Really quick, just because this has always been on my mind. I remember back when we got the norovirus, like the, I oh, still get chills yeah. when I think about it because it went through our 25 people in our family. Oh my gosh. I kept hearing from people that if we just drank grape juice all day long, that it could get, that it could help prevent it. Is that a thing I've or is that like a total? I've never heard tale? that. Okay, I've good. never heard that. I yeah. didn't think so. And I was like, I don't, I just, it said something about that. It changed the, the pH levels in your gut and then it could. I'm going to have to look that up. It, 
Great. I've never heard that. Let's bust that myth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll take your I'll take your opinions other than you know, things I saw on the internet. Yeah. So thank you so much oh, thanks, for Danielle, being for here with us today. Me. I wanna I know we're gonna maybe have another conversation closer to when your book comes out, which I'm excited okay. about. Um, but this was already so much information. Uh, and I'm super excited um, that you were here. And thank you to everybody who tuned in. It seems like they got a lot out oh, of it too, although I'm sure so this is normal guys. for you, but still so many questions. Yeah, that we yeah. Didn't get to. I know, so, I know. Well, yeah, and, and course, I, you know, we'll, we'll be, I, I'm, I'm here, yeah. right. I'm around for you guys. So great. Well, I'll post a link to the masterclass and knowing that you can um, be live every other week, I think is a huge resource for people. So I'll send everybody over okay. that way. Thanks. Thanks Dr. Yeah. All right. <laughs>